What's up everyone? I am so excited for this video. We're talking essence makeup. This was the most asked for video I think I've ever gotten. So I'm resurrecting my brand best and worst videos. I used to do these years ago. It's time, baby. We're going back through because I've tried so many more products from all of these brands. So we're going to be talking about the best, the worst, the in-between, a couple of new things they've launched. I'm still trying, but I want to talk about them too. So I hope you've got coffee, water, wine, snack, whatever, because we're diving in, baby. We're diving deep. I put all of these or as many as I could on my face. So you're going to get to see some clips of these in action and we're in natural lighting. So you're seeing it, you know, as best as the lights coming in and out. We're at the mercy of the sun and the clouds. I'm trying to decide if I want to start with my best or my worst. I, th I think I'm gonna go with best because worst, I'm gonna ruffle some of your feathers. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that towards the end because some of you guys are gonna be mad, straight up mad about ones that I don't recommend, but I don't like them, okay? I've tried, we'll talk about it, all right? <laughs> we'll get through this together. So let's start with best. It would be weird if I didn't start this part of the video with their mascara. So their Lash Princess line is definitely their most popular. You've probably heard of it. You've probably tried it. The green one's my favorite. This blue one is waterproof. There's a pink one, maybe an orange one too, but the green one's the top tier of this line. It just volumizes. I'll show you a clip of me. I'm applying the waterproof one with the blue right here. And they volumize, they curl, they hold that curl all day and I don't notice any flaking or smudging. Now, if you're someone that knows you need a waterproof formula, like you have super watery eyes, or you just know mascara tends to smudge or flake on you, go for that. If you don't need it, I typically just go for the green because I don't need something that's harder to remove because I don't have that issue. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, like my mom would absolutely have to have the waterproof version. So, love this line. I really, really do. It actually lives up to the big, big hype that it's had for years. It's actually that good. Now, I do have, and I don't have it right now, but I do have another favorite from Essence, mascara-wise, and I think I might like it better than the green piping Lash Princess. It is their Volume Stylist Lash Extension Mascara. I'll pop a picture on the screen. It's the one that's purple with the black top. That stuff is even more volumizing. So I feel like it's just like that one, but amped up a couple more degrees. And I think that's why I like it because I can get the volume I want with one coat versus going in with two of the Lash Princess. So that is one I probably purchase more than the green one, but I, I love them both and they're very similar. So a uh, top tier favorite of mine is a newer launch from them. It's their Pure Nude Baked Blushes. So I have three shades here. And the shade I'm applying right now in this clip is Shimmery Rose. It is definitely the my most reached for one. Even the packaging is like almost worn off. These are so akin to like the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish blushes that still exist. They're just that baked, not even, I was gonna say marbled, but not really, but just this beautiful formula. Now, the one thing I wanna make you aware of shade wise is the shade Pink Flush is such a pretty tone. It'd probably be my favorite, but it has glitter in it. And I mean, to be honest, it it's not so much that it really, well, I'm like even looking at that swatch, it definitely just imparts glitter. Let me see if I can show this in a swatch. I don't know if you can see the actual glitter flex, but there's a lot, but it's the sheen, the finish of these that is so stunning. It's so stunning. I just feel like it gives you that beautiful cheek look all in one, like you don't need highlighter. I do have a highlighter on, which we'll talk about but you don't need highlighter with it. It's so youthful, so glowy without being over the top, especially if you avoid the one with glitter in it. So the other shade I have is Goldie Cassis, which is such a pretty kind of purpley tone. And it is so pretty on the skin. If you have fair skin, like for me, that kind of intimidated me, but when you're actually applying it, it's, it's not too intimidating. And it just, it's one of those like winter shades in my mind, like a winter berry. Ooh, but yeah, I highly recommend these. The price point is crazy for how nice these actually are. A product that I can't believe more people aren't talking about is the lipstick that I'm wearing. This, where is it? Oh, there it is, is unreal. It's like three or $4. Um, and I'll have all of these linked in the order I mentioned them down below if you're wanting to shop. If you do shop through those links, I do make a small commission. It supports my channel. Thank you ahead of time. I really do appreciate it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this product is so amazing. It's the shade Freaky. It's their This Is Nude line of lipsticks. This is like 
Charlotte Tilbury level of creaminess with their lipstick. It really is crazy and anytime I apply it, I just feel like it gives me the same look that my Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks does. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So this is the only shade I have because it's kind of my perfect lighter nude for every day. If you have a shade recommendation, let me know. I might buy another one, but I, I, I just love this one so much. I'm like, I, I just don't need it. But the formula is comfy. I feel like it's smoothing and hydrating, but it's still nice and pigmented. 10 out of 10 lipstick, crazy price. Um, Genevieve, my five-year-old's been really into Sesame Street. And I have, if you've watched the new Sesame Street, they like redid a lot of the songs and it is so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's on um, Max. I have the letter of the day, the new letter of the day song is such a bop, it's unreal. And when it starts, I'm like, yes. And Genevieve's like, yes. And we're like, yes, it's so good. Go give it a listen. If I can find like a YouTube clip of just that, I'll link it below. It's so good. I feel like Lin-Manuel Miranda had to have like had his hand in it. It's that good. It's such, oh my gosh. Anyway, that's stuck in my head, so I keep, singing it in my <laughs> Okay, another wildly popular product of theirs is their Make Me Brow, little brow pomade. So this is in theory a dupe for all of the, you know, the benefit little brow pen, what's that called? I literally have it upstairs and I can't, but anyway, these are just a very common popular product now where it's the tiny spoolie, but for the longest time, you couldn't find ones like this in the drugstore and it was really pretty much just Essence that was making it. So I think it's really good. It's what I use in my brows today. I, the tiny spoolie is great. I think this formula is a little bit wetter, more wet, Mm. <laughs> than the e.l.f. wow brow, which you guys know I love that, but that one's a little drier, so it dries out really quickly. This thing will last a long time. So to that, I have to give it credit, and I do think it's a little bit more pigmented. Now this says it has filling fibers. This doesn't have that fibery feeling though, but I have to say like right now, I've been trying to put my brow serum farther out because I, I've got a little bit of a sparse area back here. And this did a good job filling it in where I feel like the e.l.f. wow brow, which is similarly priced, that's why I'm comparing it, um, doesn't fill it in as well. So gotta give it credit for that. I think if you want more pigment and more filling in for your brows, you might like the Essence one over the e.l.f. one. And I don't think this is something that's like holding brows in place super well. A lot of times I'll go in with a clear brow gel just to hold them in place because this is not gonna give you that like all day strong Hold. but the color will stay all day. My uh, iced coffee that I'm drinking is simply my coffee from earlier that had gotten cold. <laughs> I was like, we're pouring it over ice, baby. It's that time of the day. So this is a product that I feel like is kind of underrated at the drugstore. It's actually really good. It's their Essence The Blush. And it's their line of just simple blush colors. They're not nearly as like shimmery, if you will, or glowy as their pure nude ones but they're really good. These last all day, they're super pigmented. If you find a shade you really like, like this one in Befitting is one of my absolute favorite shades and it just lasts so well. And there is something to the finish of this that's almost satin. It's not at all glowy, like I said, but it does have this like satin finish. It's not quite matte, but it's really, I think, becoming on the skin. It's <laughs> Befitting. <laughs> if you're nasty. So I really like that. There was another one that was kind of um, more nude colored. I can write the name down below. And that one I used to have, I just didn't reach for it enough, so I eventually decluttered it, but it was also a really, really good one. I definitely feel like Essence's strong suit, other than mascara, is their cheek products. So another favorite is their bronzing powders. They give you these big whopping pans like look at that i love the tone of this bronzer so if you have fair skin like me this is in number three chocolate sunday it's so smooth and pretty finely milled that i just find that it's easy to blend in it's not like this for me is not a shade that's going to look wildly bronze like i kind of built it up but it still looks really natural that's what i like i know not everyone does but you could just adjust the shade you get based on how bronze you want to look but I just think the actual texture of this is so beautiful and it lasts really well throughout the day too. So they, I did see they have a luminous version and I don't remember if I've tried that one. That kind of sounds up my alley. It sounds similar to the L'Oreal Lumi big bronzer like this that has a little bit of glow to it. So I might have to try that. But yeah, 
This one is beautiful. I feel like not a lot of people talk about it, but it's actually really good and absolutely an alternative for like the giant honkin' Charlotte Tilbury bronzers. Very similar formula. If you are new here, I hope that you will check out some of my dupes videos. I know I've mentioned them a couple times, but it's something I, I love working on and it's one of my favorite types of videos to make. So I can link my drugstore dupes playlist. I've got tons of videos, tons of different dupes for you um, that I found over the years that I think you'll be excited by. Just saying. I'm just now realizing I have the hair clips in my hair that I was using just to pull my hair back, but I don't hate it. I'll just leave them in, you know? Oh baby, Essence. Their Pure Nude highlighter has been around forever. It's been talked about forever. Like this back 10 years ago when I started my channel, I feel like this was popular then and it's popular now. This has the craziest finish. Like it's, it's absolutely a highlighter. I'll show you me applying it. It's absolutely a highlighter, but it just has this finish that just looks pretty. It's not wildly icy. It's not so in your face, but again, it definitely does give that highlightery glow. I feel like I can go ham with this and it always looks good. I don't know what they've done that other highlighters, like I've never found a highlighter I like powder wise as much as this one. This is it. Like I've repurchased it over and over again. I always have it in my collection. Oftentimes when I travel and I'm like, I don't know, like I'm between a few highlighters, I'll go grab this one. Cause I'm like, well, it's foolproof and I know it always looks exactly how I want it to look. So this one, if you still have not tried it, give her a whirl, give her a whirl. Or if you tried it like eight years ago and you're like, I don't really remember, try it again. I think you might be surprised or you won't. You'll be like, Jessica, you're wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Well, if I'm wrong, a lot of other people are wrong too. <laughs> okay. So something a few years ago they launched that they're so good and they have a lot of different options. It's their six pan eyeshadow palettes. They have a lot of options. So the OG favorite of mine is their Nothing Compares to Nude palette. It's got shimmers, it's got just a couple mattes. I, I will say, I feel like a lot of times, especially with like these middle shades, they tend to like look similar on the eye. I don't mind it so much because oftentimes I'm just kind of doing a single color type look anyway. So I don't mind that they're all kind of looking similar, but it is something to note, but the price on this is insane because I think the shimmer quality, this is one of my favorite shimmer formulas of an eyeshadow. Like it's just, it's easy to use. The light one's not my favorite, but like these medium tone ones are so pretty. So today I have on the Coral Me Maybe one. I put on this shade here all over the lid. It is so peachy and shiny and pretty. And then I use this kind of light matte shade just to blend into the crease. It's so effortless, easy, looks like I tried harder than I did. The shimmers on this, I feel like the finish just catches the light so beautifully. It doesn't look over the top or super icy or anything. It just, it's that perfect level. So for me, I love it. I also have bronzed this way, which is more of like a bronzy palette. So, so good. If you find a like colorway of these that you love, snatch it up because I think these are gorgeous. They do have, they have like a blue toned one that's got more like icy colors. Um, I wanna say they have like a smoky grayish one. So a lot of options for you. All right, so a couple more faves. This eyeliner really took me by surprise. I just re, I, I tried this a while ago. I just recently retried it knowing I was doing this video. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I knew it was good, but I, I just needed to retry it a few more times. So this is the Extreme Lasting Eye Pencil. It's waterproof. I have the shade, but first espresso, love the name. And it's super dark. It's technically brown, but it's very, very dark. It says it's waterproof. Y'all, this is performing just as well in the past few days I've tried it as my Sephora 12 hour one that I'm obsessed with because I'll put it in the upper water line and it doesn't transfer. This one's not transferring either, you guys. I can't believe it. I have tried, I swear to you, every eyeliner at the drugstore and most of them transfer down. So the fact that this one's not is incredible. So I would run out and go, if you can find a shade you like, I mean, I am so impressed and it's so creamy. It's totally one of those that if you wanna do what I did where I kind of blend it with an eyeliner brush to kind of, kind of soften the look and like give a little wing, does it so easily and then it does set down I'm just so impressed and I'm so glad I retried it. And then another favorite is their Stay 8 Hour Lip Liner. So again, this says it's waterproof. You know, I don't know. I haven't tested it like that. But it has a little sharpener on the back if you want to do that. You know what I mean? But it, it's retractable. So this shade, 
is my perfect, I'm wearing it with that lipstick. Is it called, is the shade Casanova? Does that sound right? Well, whatever the shade is, maybe that's the shade, um, I will put it below. This is absolutely so creamy, but it does stay. And it's one of those formulas that I think is perfect for slight, like if you like to slightly overline your lips to make them look just a little plumper, this is it. Especially if you find one that's close to your lip tone like this one is for me. Like it's just, it's so good. It stays in place, it's so creamy. So this is one I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on and I would, if you need a lip liner, that's one I would look at. All right, let's talk about my medium products. Things that I don't think are bad, but I don't like, I'm not shouting from the rooftops like, oh, you have to try it. All of those other things I mentioned, I think everyone should try if you're in need of one of those things. One of my meds, I used to like a little bit more, but as I've tried it over the past like months and months, I just discovered it's okay, it's not my favorite. And that would be the Essence 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. I'll show you me applying it. It definitely tamps down oil. It definitely kind of mattifies the area, perfects it a little bit. It does have some coverage and that's a big reason why I like it. But I just find that it's a little more powdery than a lot of my other powder foundations that I love. And so for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> but really, I just feel like the center of my face especially has texture and this is one that highlights that. So I just think it's good. Like if I were in a pinch and they had Essence and I saw this and I needed a powder foundation, I could see myself buying it, but it's never gonna be a like top tier recommendation for me. I actually think it's not bad on the under eye. That's what I did today. And that's probably how I would continue to use it up because it's nice that it does have a little more coverage, mattifies, but I don't think it made it look like super cakey, crepey, or weird like some powder foundations do. So that's probably how I would recommend using it. Not bad, not great. Okay, they're the highlighter. I wanna show you a swatch comparing this and the Pure Nude because I, I know I'm gonna get that question. The Pure Nude is just a little bit more understated. Again, like I said, still a highlighter, but it just doesn't have that like, I keep saying icy. I feel like that's not quite the word I want. In this case, like there's obviously a tone difference. They're literally different shades. So that's the Pure Nude, that's the Luminous Glow. I just like the Pure Nude one better. If you're going between these two highlighters, that's what I would recommend. I think part of it is this shade is just a lot lighter, so it's way more obvious on my skin. And I just think it's got a little bit more highlighteriness, like glowiness to it than this does. So there you go. I hope that made sense. <laughs> like I could see myself one day decluttering just the regular highlighter because I, I just don't reach for it over the other one. Okay, this is one I, I could not find. So I'll pop a picture on the screen. It's their Kiss by the Light Illuminator. It's this powder that you kind of, it's got like pink and bronzer and highlighter shades and you kind of mix it. The way I've used it is just all over my cheek. Be not all over, but you know what I mean. Like in the blushy, bronzy zone. The nice thing is I think the tone of it's really pretty. And so when it's mixed together really well, it can just look like you've done everything all in one step. So I like the idea of it. I think it looked pretty, but it was just one of those things I didn't use enough because I like, you know, if I'm gonna bronze, I also want some bronzer up here and I didn't wanna put that up there. So it kind of felt like one of those, if you were really trying to like, quicken your makeup routine. That's something that kind of does a lot all in one, but I think for a lot of people, it, it just doesn't have a great fit in their makeup routine. Do you know what I mean? But it was pretty. Their Cranberry Lip Oil is actually pretty nice, but it wasn't one that, again, I didn't think it was anything revolutionary. I felt like the oil, the first few, like hour or two was really nice, but after a while it was gone. And I've, I've had lip oils that just last a little bit longer. There's nothing wrong with it, but I just don't feel that strongly about it. So something I'm still trying, so I can't really, you know, give my thoughts, is their new Essence Baby Got Bronze. So they also have a Baby Got Blush. I'll pop a picture on the screen. I've already ordered it, baby, and I've already ordered another shade of this because I was so impressed. Now this is like comically gray. It is a true contour. If you wanna see me actually trying this on, I'll link the video up in the card, in that little eye up there, and down below because, um, I think you should see this in action. It's really a cool product. It, I think it worked pretty well and it lasted pretty well, but I wanna try a more like true bronzer shade. But I'm excited because I like this formula. I'm excited to try the blush. I hope that I like it. Um, just wanted to mention it because it is new and you know, it's kind of exciting. That was one area I felt like Essence hadn't tapped into the like cream and liquid bronzer blush highlight market. And it sounds like they're dipping their toes, baby. All right, let's talk about my least favorites. I'm going to start with one that's going to upset you guys, like I said, and I don't like the Bye Bye Panda Eyes mascara. I know a lot of people like it because it's like supposed to not smudge and this, that, and the other. 
I don't like it. It didn't do anything for me. I felt like it was harder to apply. Like there was something about the formula that I couldn't build it up. And I don't know, let me double check. I don't think it's meant to be like a super volumizing formula and that's okay. Like there's a place for that. And obviously not everyone likes volumized lashes like I do. So Essence says it's a tubing mascara. I think it just doesn't work, I don't think as well as the other tubing mascaras when it comes to volume. The removal process where, you know, it's like the, it comes off with warm water, sure. And that in theory makes it a tubing mascara, like it forms tubes around your lashes and then they just come off with warm water, which is amazing. And the thing about tubing mascara that's amazing is that it is smudge proof if it's a true tubing mascara. So this one, I didn't notice crazy sponging from, sponging, what am I saying? I didn't notice crazy smudging at all. So that was good. But again, it just gives a little bit more of a natural lash. And it says clean volume and defined lashes. So I guess that's my point. Other tubing mascaras that I love give that volume. So for me, it's just not for me. You know what I'm saying? Okay, this, all about matte white powder for some reason and maybe because it's just so stark white it makes me think of chalk on chalkboard <laughs> well, it's a good thing i was a teacher in this era where we had like dry erase boards because i would never have survived with a chalkboard <laughs> but this stuff i feel that it's chalky it really like anytime i used it on my under i could not use it like to set my face it was way i know it's white and it's technically translucent but no like it i felt like it kind of gave that slight white cast on the under eye, it was a little bit better, but I still felt like it was really just chalky and just not, not cute. It just was not my, not my C's. Especially if you have drier skin, I just don't think you'd like it. And it, it's a mattifying powder, so you probably wouldn't be super into it anyway. Okay, this one, the Keep Me Covered Foundation, I really didn't like. Now, I've learned to mix it with other things and it can look really pretty. So today I mix this really more just to get a better shade match but I mix this with a BB cream. This is the Herborean one. I've been mixing into a lot of things. I love this stuff so much. Anyway, and it can look really pretty, but on its own, I just felt like, yes, it did give coverage, but it was just a little bit too much. And I don't have wildly dry or wildly oily skin, but even in that middle ground, I felt like it was just cakey. Like it felt and looked like I was wearing makeup. And obviously you can tell I'm wearing makeup no matter what, but some, most foundations that I like don't look so makeup-y and this one really did. So this was not one I would recommend. Eventually I'll probably get rid of it, but I'm trying to make it work by just mixing stuff into it. But um, it says it's transfer and waterproof. I mean, I don't, I didn't really test those claims a ton. Long lasting, I could maybe see, but it just ugh, it made my skin not look healthy at all. So on that note, the Keep Me Cover Concealer, absolutely not. That is one of the worst looking concealers on my under. I don't have it. I must have decluttered it when I did my concealer declutter video. I'm sure that I did. It just made me look like easily 10 to 15 years older than I am. It sunk into every fine line, which concealers sink into lines. I'm cool with that, but that this was worse. <laughs> this was like abnormal, but it also just like, it never really fully blended in. It just looked weird. And it was one of those, every time I tried to wear it, I, I absolutely had to wipe it off. I hated it so much. So. That is definitely on the worst list. The Fix and Last Jelly Primer. I don't love jelly primers. Like there are a few I like, like the e.l.f. Um, gripping one, but that's not so sticky. I felt that this jelly primer was just kind of sticky and I just felt for some reason when I would put that on my skin, I felt like it was gonna make me break out and I can't explain that. And that is not a like, oh, drugstore things. No, you guys know I love drugstore products. But there was just something about it that I just didn't like using it. And so I only used it a few times and I didn't feel that it made enough of a difference to even be worth applying it. So eventually I just got rid of it. Oh, this one, the Lash Princess liner, the liquid liner that's like a thick, almost like a Crayola marker type liner. That was one of the worst liquid liners I've ever tried. It was just, it felt like I was using a black Crayola marker to try to line my eyes. It was like, watered down color, like it was really bad. I can't believe it's still on the shelves. That's how bad it felt to me, but maybe I had a dud. Let me know if you use it and it just works. But anytime I would try to like, if I had any sort of shadow, like especially with shimmer and I was trying to like go over it, you, you couldn't, like it, it was awful. <laughs> so bad. Um, and then this one, I feel like I could move to the meh because it's not as bad as this other, the other powder I talked about, but this is the Brighten Up Banana Powder. Now, a lot of people love this, I'm fully aware, 
But for me, I, again, I didn't feel, I felt like it felt chalky, similar to that white powder I mentioned. It just didn't, it just looked bad. Like I would rather have not powdered my under eyes at all than have used that. It looked, it made it look worse and that defeats the purpose, right? So that was one I pretty quickly wrote off and got rid of, but I don't think it's as bad as the All About Matte White Powder, but for me, it just wasn't something I liked. So I wanna share my top picks. So what are like my top three products that I think any of you guys would most likely like and they're just so wonderful, period, regardless of the price point. So my top faves, here we go. I think the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush, it's just that pretty, you guys. I love that, sorry. I love that you guys, sorry. <laughs> I'm like reading a text out loud while I'm talking and that's how my brain works. So it's just one of those all in one beautiful products. I love that it shaves off time where I can just put it on and I'm like, yep, and I'm glowy. It always looks good. I can go ham with this. It never looks splotchy or weird or, oh, it's just, it's truly like when I open my blush drawer, this is one of my top favorite blushes easily. The lipstick. The fact that this is a couple dollars and is as pretty as it is, I've now had this on for like an hour maybe. And I have super line lips, so y'all know like, but I just think <laughs> it's so pretty. It doesn't even feel like I'm wearing lipstick. It's that moisturizing. So 10 out of 10, recommend. And then the highlighter. I'm just gonna recommend it again because anytime I forget about how good this is and I try it again, I'm like, oh yeah. That's why I've loved it for years. That's why so many people love it. It's just so beautiful. So that's everything. If you enjoyed this best and worst brand video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. If you're not someone used to giving videos thumbs up, I'm trying to be better about it myself for people I watch. It really does help. Anytime you comment on a video, it helps us in the algorithm. It helps YouTube know to recommend this video to more people that you guys are liking it. So any of that kind of engagement helps. So please do that for your favorite creators, whether it's me or not, that's cool. But it, it's, you know, YouTube is weird and everything's confusing. And <laughs> nothing stays the same. So anything, you know, anyway, okay. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe uh, next month. Like I said, I will do my next one. Let me know in a comment what brand you want me to do next. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.